Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today is going to be a mishmash of all sorts of things. Now, you guys are watching this video around the 13th or 14th or 15th of March and I'll actually be at the retreat that Susanna is running down in um, Ballarat. Um, so this video is actually being filmed uh, a week prior so we're just coming into early March now. So what I thought I'd do is I've got a couple things I want to show you. I want to flash flesh out a few ideas for a project coming up at the end of March for Easter. So where do I start? First thing, I need to make a bunch of flowers for Susanna. And I've got the very pattern and the very idea, and you've probably seen me talk about the concept um, when I set young Edie up, a little cousin, with her very first sewing project, and um, she's off making petals, and the pattern is in here, but we'll get to that. So, I can um, release this video today because I'm actually... Uh, with Susanna and I've been there for about four or five days so she will have received her bunch of flowers and her chocolates so first things first this tin I picked up on um, Bunnings marketplace so in Australia Bunnings is our major hardware and it appears that they've started a whole online side to their business which is pretty much just I guess taking a small profit from other businesses that sell products and they're like using their massive pool of database and contact to all of us to promote these other businesses. Because when you go looking on that website, you can see everything from furniture through to knickknacks, through to kitchens, all sorts of things. It's quite random actually. It's popping up on Facebook a lot and it's called Bunnings Marketplace. So my guess is they're trying to do a bit of an Amazon thing and they're sitting between someone selling something, tins for the example, <clears throat> and me. So Aussie Girls, this is on Bunnings Marketplace. It is really, really cool. I have seen it pop up a few times. It must be because Mr. Google knows that I'm a bit of a, a sewer and thought I might be interested in it. So I ordered two, one for myself and one for Susanna. Now, my mate Mary Ann makes the best rocky road. Oh my goodness, it has it is decadent. It even goes to the point of pistachios are in it, and um, you're going to all want to be making rocky road after this. What's the other thing she puts in? Pretzels. So you get that salt and sweet in amongst it. The normal ingredients of rocky road, then you know the jellies, the marshmallows, the chocolates, and things like that. But those pistachios and the um, pretzels, oh my goodness, next level stuff. So Marianne has the tin as I'm filming this and she's filling it full of this gorgeous rocky road. So that's the first part. So we've got chocolates in a gorgeous tin that she'll be able to use afterwards. So let me just put that aside. That one's my tin, because you know, the girl's got to have another pot to put things in. <coughs> Flowers now. Do you remember when I did a book review of this book? So, Sue Stitchberry. Oh my goodness, I'm such a fan. Flowers. I actually went to look at Sue's Instagram page. Now, her Instagram page is Calico and Stitch. It's not actually under her name. She might have one under her name, but I got as far as Calico and Stitch, and that was down this rabbit hole that was like, oh my goodness, years of her creativity, and it just just gave me so much joy looking through all of those yummy fabrics that she has and what she does with them. Calico and Stitch quilts from Nana's treasure chest. That's so what it is. Oh, lovely, lovely lady. So I'm thinking about Easter. What am I going to do for Easter? And I really want to do something a bit quilty, but not a quilt. Does that make sense? So I'm sort of just churning a few ideas around. There's just so many elements of um, the quilting world that I used to do that I want to drag back into this world. 
And I think the other thing that kicked it off is about a week ago, Catherine from K3N did a episode on needle turn applique um, or applique. So what I want to do is revisit that because I used to do a lot of it and it just drove me batty. All of the needles, uh, all the pins and oh my goodness. Don't tell me my book is breaking there. No, oh, please don't break. Um, where was I? So Catherine does this. I'll flip through this while I yibber yabber. Otherwise you're sitting there going, show us the book, girl. So... Yeah, Catherine did this episode where she needle turn applique and she did the needle turning before it got to the actual piece you're attaching to. I'll link the episode below. Genius, genius. It is. It eliminates all of the pins. You know, it just, oh my goodness. I remember doing a huge quilt and... I was going to needle turn applique it and I was just so over the turning and the stitching that I ended up blanket stitching it and I regret it to this day. It was it was a heap of whimsical angels with big wings and I think there was like nine of them or 12 of them. It was a pattern from Patchwork Angel. They don't uh, exist anymore in Queensland. They're a beautiful shop on um, the Sunshine Coast. And oh boy. Gee, they were good. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> There's the flowers. So they are little whimsical flowers that you stitch the petals, stitch them all together, and you use a knitting needle as the stalk. So I've gone and dug out some knitting needles. Now, I've inherited a lot of knitting needles, both my grandmother. Oh, look, that is the tape measure that I stitched is too. I remember the Dean. That's the tape measure I stitched on my treasure hunt piece. So in here, look, Grandma even had a little hammer. I don't know she used that for tapping in studs. I forgot that was in there. So I've got heaps of knitting needles. And I'm not a knitter. So I'll probably go through them and if I can bear to part with them, Lady Jane. Um, knitting needles will be in plenty of supply. Gary's grandmother also was a big knitter. So I've got hers as well. And look, you can, at the end of the day, you can find them in so many opportunity stores and thrift stores. So knitting needles are not an issue. So the plan is to make young Susanna um, a bunch of flowers. She's rearranged her craft room. She's... Um, been organising, emptying out stashes, turning them into packs for the girls at the retreat. Oh my gosh, you should see what's coming for the retreat. Well, I'm actually there now. Look at that, with the little... <clears throat> oh, I just think these, this book and this girl, Sue, has just, I don't know. See, there's a Japanese rice bag. Look at the colours, the little patches of vintage fabric, the daisy. Mm. Tiny little embroideries. So I'm thinking Easter bunny. Look at him. But I'm not using that bunny. Mind you, I could use that bunny, but I'm not using that bunny because I've got myself a bunny. This is the young fella. I'll link him below as well. He is a pattern to make a three-dimensional bunny that sits... He's stitched onto a stand. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just wanting the shape of this bunny. I just think he's the most gorgeous, playful. Look at the toes. Oh. <clears throat> Let's see. So my plan is to get bunny pattern. I've reduced it in size by 50%. And this is going to be my bunny for Easter. That's all these bits. And I'm going to use the technique that Catherine showed us and do some needle turn applique onto a panel of fabric. Now at the moment, I'm thinking it'll be a linen tea towel. I've got a few that I picked up in France and I thought, right, time to do a panel. So this project's gonna kick off in 
East, at Easter. There'll be a bunny as the feature, or at least the start of many features. Who knows what's all gonna end up on this panel, but bunny's gonna kick it off. He is the, the starting point. This little pattern is available on Etsy. I think it was about $11 Australian. Um, he'd make a great project over that Easter period as well. Imagine that as a, um, what do they call them? Those bobbins that we've been putting our stitching on. You could put the bobbin into him and he'd stand. Make a great pin cushion. Lovely, lovely pattern, guys. So I highly recommend that. And then I'm going to use Sue's work as inspiration where I explore. There's the other little template for my flowers. Use, oh, look at the little houses. Like we could put a little house on it. The panel is going to be very random. It's going to be whatever I feel like is going to be plopped on there. Is what I'm thinking. If I feel like making a little house, I'll make a little house. If I feel like making a wash, washing line full of quilts, I'll make a little washing line full of quilts. That's the sort of ideas. Like I've got all of these ideas flipping around in my brain. There's the flowers. And I figured I can make some of these little things and then make them as a, like for example, a little house, I'd make a flat version of that. Instead of making a three-dimensional, make a flat version of a little house and plop it onto the piece. So it'll be whimsical, it'll be random. Yeah. It's like I've got a little list of ideas written in my diary and it'll take me a month of Sundays to do them all. So what I thought I'm gonna do is pull together a, a panel and have all of these little projects stitched onto it. So you might have little projects already, like a random block that you did and the quilt never happened. Pull it out, pop it on the panel. You might have a little embroidery that uh, you finished and you're like, well, into the cupboard it went, pop it onto the panel. It's going to be that type of eclectic collection of um, bits and bobs. So that's that's what I'm thinking. So let's just keep flipping through here, like yo-yos and Suffolk puffs and needle turn appliques. Look at the little itty bitty um, English paper piecing. I love English paper piecing. It seriously is, uh, but I am resisting the urge doing a quilt. I'm not going to do it. I, I watched Tia do all of these little little English paper piecing hexagons and then I someone else will pop up on YouTube and I'm like, oh, I could just sit on it for years and say, no, 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 no. But we will do some and pop it onto the piece. Just beautiful. Even these little girls. Maybe my Liberty fabric pack could come into play here. Now I've been carting around that Liberty fabric. I don't know. We'll talk fabric in a minute. I've got a few ideas. I've got twile. I've got some pieces of that. I've got um, French vintage. I've got some actual packs of fabric, and this is one here from Lucello that I haven't yet played with. But I don't know, I don't know. Let's just keep flipping. I'm just going through ideas, just getting my head around. Oh, look at a, a visit to the, the fair. There'll definitely be some embroidery in there. Just whimsical. These little people are just gorgeous. Who else did I see has done some of these? I saw in the Instagram uh, page for Sue that Nikki Franklin and Sue have been together at workshops and things. And I was like, oh, what a match made in heaven. Those two girls, just gorgeous. I think um, I saw Nikki has done a project using the little ladies. Just gorgeous. All right, look at all these little... Larry. Uh, it, it's just such a beautiful book, guys. There's so much. See this? Uh, there's a bit of embroidery there from a doily. Mm. 
pieced together. Just clever. Scotty dog. I love that. I love the colours too. See, needle turn applique. And a little bit of just put down the fabric and stitch it so it's three-dimensional. It's not actually turned. And the yo-yo's in there. There's the flower again. I've got some of that fabric. Yeah, that there, gorgeous. And bunny in amongst it. So that's the idea, guys. I've got this mishmash. Oh, it's just beautiful. Look at all that stitching. Here we go, we've got an Easter quilt. I haven't looked through this book for probably, oh gosh, probably 12 months or so. And every time I pass it in my studio, I'm like, oh, I must explore this. And then as soon as I saw Catherine's video, I'm like, needle turn applique. I've got to revisit it using Catherine's technique. If you haven't seen it and you're wondering, oh, I wonder what Catherine did. Catherine cut out her shapes. Let's say that's the shape. And before it got to the fabric where you do the old turn it, pin it and stitch it. She did it here, turn it and little invisible stitches. So that piece after being finger pressed and then turned like so, became a little element ready to go down on the fabric. Genius. Absolutely genius. Like, and now, now it's a project that you can sit in front of the telly and be social with your family and not have a massive piece of fabric on your lap that you're stitching. You can have all of these little pieces ready to go. Like so. Isn't it great? <laughs> oh my goodness. So suddenly these flowers, all these little curves seem actually enjoyable, like actually achievable. Oh. Yeah. So the plan is to get the bunny pattern, turn it into a flat image, reduce it in size because he's a big bunny, uh, get a flat image of him, needle turn, applique him prior to attaching him. I'll go through it all in the video. Look at some of these gorgeous... Maybe, maybe I've got to think about Liberty Fabric. I don't know. I worry about that when it comes to Easter. The, the series will kick off, kick off on the Easter Saturday. So I'll go to Ballarat, do my thing down there, socialising and shopping. Like, you know, it's hard work. And then when I get back to Brisbane, I will have Easter coming up quite quickly and I will be working on my bunny. So we can put some needle turn applique. I might even go revisit some old patterns that I've got from my quilt days and maybe I get that dolly angel out that I never needle turn applique and do her again. Maybe that's in the woodwork. So there you go. Patterns in the back. Oh, there's all sorts of goodies. Little flowers. Oh, the memories of doing it. All right, now the second book that sits very close to this book is What Once Was Old. Bonnie Sullivan, a similar style needle turn. Look at the butterflies with the peg. That's another project. Maybe we could make one of those for Susanna's bunch of flowers. We'll see how we go for time. Bunnies, bunnies in the brambles, bunnies in the berries. 
Oh, ones are gorgeous. I've got some old vintage pieces of quilt too that could join this project, but it'll be, depend on whether the colors match the fabric that I choose. I sort of have, I'm sort of halfway between the quilting world with a lot of fabrics from the quilts and then new ones that I've picked up. And then I've got a small collection of vintage fabrics sort of sneaking into it. And I'm sort of mishmashing it all together because I don't want to lose my quilt fabrics. And I really don't have enough of the vintage because it's so hard to come by in Australia. So I sort of, and if I was to keep buying, you know, packs with quilts cut up in them, like cutter quilts, it just would get crazy expensive, really expensive. So the girl has to just steady, <laughs> steady as she goes. I'd hate to think what damage I'm doing down in Ballarat about now. Gail's patchwork emporium. Oh, could you imagine? No, hopefully I'm being quite refrained. I love that. Just gorgeous. If I did French fabrics, that'd be a style of image that I would probably go for. But I like the shape of that flower. Yeah. So that's my inspiration, guys. So let me just put them one side. We've got knitting needles ready to roll. And I've been busy, busy, busy cutting out the little flower elements. So I made the templates that are from the book. Haven't yet done the... See, these templates I was using with Edie, so I had a set and Edie had a set. We were cutting out random colours for her to have a little pack to go and sew. My little cousin, I think she's 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that vicinity. So this was my little template from that. So I, I sort of did a little bit different from the book because I had some wadding and I had some calico. So I cut out the wadding, it's actually cotton wool blend batting that I was using in the quilts. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it'll give a little bit of structure for the flowers to sort of sit. So that's the calico and the wadding. And then I put a little stitch in it. They were flipping around everywhere. They were dropping down around the couch, just flipping all over the place. So that's, that's a heap of them made, and I'm not sure how many I've got there, but I've got heaps. And then I ran out of batting, ran out of calico, and I thought, right, stop. Then I started cutting the decorative piece and attached that to the first two pieces, and now I've got my petal. So the theory is <clears throat> you just then join them all together and you use the centerpiece to stitch it together and then a hole and the needle knitting needle holds it there I'm sure I, I know when I showed you guys the book quite a few of you had said that you had made them already and you're pretty pleased with them so yeah so then I thought about fabrics and I've got some fabrics in a bowl that are like scraps and a lot of them sort of weren't Susanna's colors so I started going through my stash <clears throat> and I found this now I am pretty sure from memory that when I bought this Susanna did as well so I would say I'm pretty pretty safe it's printed in Japanese quilt gate Let's see if we can find a name for you guys. I'd be pretty confident that I could do Susanna's Bunch of Flowers. There we go. Quilt Gate. I can't recall where we got it from. Someone posted it. Look at that. That's It's so her. So that's the plan. While I'm sitting here yabbering to you guys... I'm going to, how do we approach music? We do it like that. I'm going to make 
some petals for Susanna's bunch of flowers. The, this little bunch here, that was a scrap of fabric that I had in my stash. It was a tiny little square. I think it was a, um, a charm or something. It was probably about the size of that piece there. And I know Edie took a little bit and I kept a little bit because I thought that's just the perfect little flower. Got my needle and thread here. <clears throat> so that one's already been done. And I might just do a couple because we'd have to be pretty safe into thinking that we'll be doing a few green flowers, petals. So I guess you've got a couple options. You can make them all the same color. You could mix up the petals like they are in the book. I'll make that decision when it comes to putting them together, I think. At the moment, we've got a color palette that'll be pleasing. I know Susanna, I'm positive Susanna has this pack of fabric. I did think about this fabric for my Easter project, but it'll be hard to bring in my vintage. Where's the little scissors gone? Are you serious? My table is such a mess, guys. What did I do with my scissors? I know they're here somewhere. <clears throat> Goodness me, they must be still sitting by the couch. I'm going to pause the video and come back to you guys. Okay, I'm back. So I just was thinking, I had this pack of fabric sitting in a box marked Lucello fabric. I'm wondering if it's a fabric that I got from those guys in Melbourne. I might just open up a couple more. Maybe I've got two packs mixed together here. It's hard to keep it all organized, isn't it? Well, I find that the case. Let's just get this folded up because that'll make me feel like I'm still organized. It's beautiful fabric. Let's get these little guys out of the way. Once I get to the end of this video, I'll make my little flowers. It'll probably take me a few days. And um, oh, look at it, it's gorgeous. I'm gonna say that that print's too big to cut up. Let's just check. Maybe this is a quilt gate still. Yeah, it seems to be part of something. Maybe Susanna doesn't have this pack. I know we did a bit of Lucello. We'd have to have some pink pink music. <clears throat> oh, who knows? Maybe I should keep, get that up the right way. Music. Okay, so I've got that upside down. Right, we need to, do we have the music when you look at the flower? Would need to be that way. Or do you have the music <clears throat> the right way around the edge of the petals? Oh my goodness, seriously, is that a concern? <laughs> it obviously is. So that means I could use this end. Because the right, or is it switched around? Oh no. Okay, those will be ironed out and redrawn because I feel like you need to look at the flower and the music is the right way towards the center of the flower. <coughs> I'm glad I picked that up. That would have been would have been disappointing. I remember when we got the book. Susanna was like, oh, I'd love to make those flowers for my studio. 
<clears throat> and then I pulled the book out thinking about Easter and I saw the flowers again and I'm like, hmm, if I have a good memory, the girl was keen on having flowers in her studio from this book. So chocolates and a bunch of flowers. She's been very generous in hosting me for the the days prior to the retreat. <clears throat> Freeloading on her couch. She's put a blooming back out, rearranging the room to make it comfortable for me and putting chairs in the corner for me to sit and stitch at. And oh, she's a gorgeous girl. And has somehow jarred her back and oh. One of the flower images, some of these. Let's have a look at this fabric. How do we, how do we capture? <clears throat> we could probably get ourselves a few different unusual petals out of this. That there would be a good petal. Let's store around and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's cute. We have that little lace. <clears throat> we'll do another one of those. Good capture. <clears throat> might just stay over here, capture him. <clears throat> oh, goodness me. Just had a coffee and I drank it fast and now my throat's all, all yucky. It's making me cough. It's not a very interesting pet. I might leave it at that. I don't want to switch cheese things too much. This is a great way to use some scraps up. And that's something we all have, guys. Probably should have counted how many petals I have to <laughs> how many I'm actually making. I think you use five. Let's get some green. I think you use five petals, but you don't have to. You could use, I guess, more or less. That's just what the pattern shows. <clears throat> you could probably make some daisy-like. I had thought of doing some stitching on some as well too, just to mix it up a bit. I put a little little um, piece of vintage something in there and then stitch. There's another variation. I should go through my doilies. I don't think I have, I don't have many left. Gee, some of the projects we've done in the last 12 months has really nibbled into, really nibbled into my um, stash. So I'd have to do a little bit of embroidery, I think, to create some, which is all right. So we've got that, a bit of a mix there. I might leave it at that for now. Oh, there was a paisley, no, we need some paisley, don't we? Let's get some paisley. These just to me seem too big of a print. So I'm gonna put them to side, to side, our side. If, if I need more, I can revisit. Now let's get some paisley. Some stripes would be good too. Actually, I think I've got a fabric in the cupboard that was the back of a quilt. And that, it's like a candy stripe. My 
my stash of plain fabrics. Neutral scrappy bits is just here. So we might grab that next and those little embroidered ones can be done on some vintage vintage cloth. And I'm wondering if there's something from Paris there because the pair of us met for the first time in Paris on that textile tours. So it'd be lovely to have a little bit of fabric in there that we scrounged from the streets of Paris. <laughs> I was actually reminiscing about that the other night. There was, um, oh, now what was I watching? I've watched a few series in a row that are all war movies from history and they're all mushing together. So I'm starting to get a little bit confused on names and titles. I'll just talk it through and that might bring it to my mind. Um, oh, I know, A New Look. The story of Coco Chanel and Christian Dior, the four years that the Germans had occupied Paris and how they survived. And Coco Chanel, she was pretty much in exile in the Ritz, and um, which, you know, is still a pretty extravagant lifestyle, I might add. But her boutique had to close. Um, and she was getting propositioned by the authorities all the time, the German authorities, to um, do ball, um, dresses and design. And she, she held out and said, no, no, I'm not doing it. But then she got tangled up with this fellow and it turned out he was not a good fellow. So that sort of got her in a bit of trouble in the future when the Germans left Paris and the Allied troops came back and the Paris police took over, the French police took back control of their country and then they were rounding up all of the sympathisers. So that's the gist of the story. So you've got Chanel, Coco Chanel's story and Christian Dior's story. And Christian, he at that stage was just a, a designer for another Brand. I can't remember the name of the brand. I'd actually never heard of it, but I'm not into brands as such. I don't buy brands. I'd rather buy fabric <laughs> and grungy old doilies. So, yeah, it, um, it was pretty much this story of survival. And then after the Germans left, of course, they got a, a lot of explaining to do by some of the actions that took place. So it's that sort of... I'm thinking of just using some bits of these types of things. There's a few. I know that's old linen from France, so. If not, it'll be linen from Italy. Par um, some of Rachel's packs. But I think it is France. I'm pretty sure it is. So anyway, as I was saying, um, where was this story leading? I don't know. My goodness me. Um, oh. Now I've gone blank. I don't know, guys. It was to do with Fran. Oh, I know, I know. Yes, so I was reminiscing. So my husband said, I didn't know the Ritz were in Paris. He always thought that that was a unique one-off hotel in London. Because um, when we had a little visit, to, this is why I can never remember the point because I head off on all these tangents. Many, many years ago, my husband and I did our usual trip to China to source goods for our business and visit the factories that help us put together product range. Uh, and we thought, well, every year we just come straight back home because we're usually exhausted. But this year we decided to continue on to Frankfurt because there was a big Christmas wholesale fair there. And we'd never been to um, Frankfurt. So off we went. And when you're that far across Europe, we're like, well, 
let's add on a little holiday. So we did a week in London and a week in Paris. As you sort of, you pay all that money to get there. <clears throat> you might as well, you know, keep going while you're in that vicinity of the world. Australia is just so far away from everywhere and it costs a bomb to get anywhere. So we made, made a meal of it. So I Googled the Ritz Paris. This is the point of the whole bloomin' chit chat. I Googled the, the Ritz and said to my husband, yeah, they're, they're everywhere. There's, it's part of a big group. It may have been one of the originals, who knows, back in the day, but <clears throat> it was a German base when they invaded France and stationed themselves at the Ritz in Paris. Of course they did. That would have been a lovely place to stay. And Coco Chanel, she had an apartment there. That's how she got right into the middle of all of the mess that was going on then in the early 1940s. So, yeah, it was, oh, it was a great, great story. It was sort of like when I started watching it, I was like, oh, I was, uh, you know, went I went to Chanel's, um, production, one of their production houses where they use students from the local university studying textile art and creation to design fabrics for Chanel so that when it came to putting a collection together, they'd have a heap of, I'm just making so many petals here, I don't even know if I need them all. I'll keep going. <laughs> it's got out of hand, hasn't it? Yeah, so <clears throat> I can always just iron them off if we don't use them. I'm thinking I might leave them attached to actually do some embroidery on. Yeah, so Coco Chanel was mixed up in it due to where her apartment was. It was just a great story. But at, as it started, I was like, oh, I feel a bit, I don't know. Uh, she appeared to be a sympathiser. But, of course, as the story went on, gosh, it, at the end of the day, it was all about survival. So it's a real moral a moral issue. Do you stand by, they're the enemy, I will not give you anything, and I'll immediately go work for the resistance, but then run the risk of losing your life because you have picked a side, or do you try and survive and keep your head down and do what you can to give the Germans the bare minimum and, if anything, gather some intelligence and try and... I don't know. It's, it's one of those moral codes. So it was quite interesting, and by the end of the movie, uh, I don't know, I was even more conflicted. It's just horrible. War is horrible, was what I came to. And I guess until you're in that environment, it's very hard to make a decision on how you would behave because you just I just saw all types of humanity. So what I'm thinking with these is how are we going for time? Oh, 15 minutes or so. What I'm thinking with these, oh, look, my Orts jar. Nikki Franklin Orts jar. There we go. We just found the threads. Um, <clears throat> is doing some little embroidery on them. So classic would be some little lazy daisy. Just keep it simple. And then some little French knots, some little leaves coming out. Um, grub roses would have to be part of it, wouldn't it? We do cast on stitch, couple little and then join them together. Um, What's that flower where you do, or the stitch where you do uneven spikes like that? And then you wind it around. I go, no, you guys are yelling at the screen. 
I can't think. I'm still thinking about movies. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, that's even. So it's got to be uneven. I need the iron. I've jiggered this up. But you know what I mean? Where you then wind your thread around to get that look. Some of those. What else is there? Where's Jennifer Coulston's books? The girl, she'll have some. Hang on, guys. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's have a peruse of Jennifer's books. Oh, French knots. That one there. That's a good one. So that's upside down. <laughs> you guys get the general gist. When I go to stitch this, I'll make sure they're all the right way. I'm not going to separate them. I'm going to leave them like that because that'll make it easier for my hands to hold them. So let's go up here and then we have a spray and we do little French knots like that. Look, I haven't even got off the front cover. What about some of those? They look gorgeous. Spin this back around, girl, because you have to make sure your direction is right. So that's classic. Um, Jennifer with the stems like that. Cute, cute. Some of those. What else has she got? Oh, lavender. Oh my goodness, this is turning into a major project. That's all good. Let's get the stem up. Lavender like so. And then some little. Little flowers at the top. Some lavender. We've got. That one's got to be reversed. So let's pretend that's there and that's there. <laughs> got it upside down. But that's all good. What else have we got just on the front cover? All right, let's 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 just open a random page. Boom. Not much help to us. Another one. Okay. Ribbon embroidery. I don't think I want to do ribbon embroidery. I want to keep it simple. Beads. Don't want to do beads, but could do beads. Beads would look amazing. Oh, here we go. Look, look, look at that. Oh, let's just do a, what we call a random. So it's like I'm aiming for H. See H right there. So we've got a bullion stitch, a bullion stitch, bullion, bullion. So five bullion stitches. Then what has she done? She's done a lazy daisy stitch with a, a bullion stitch at the end. Then what has she done? Itty bitty tiny French knots. Oh, beautiful. Okay, what else have we got? So this one she's used cast on stitch. So we've got ourselves a couple little petals, uh, leaves coming off like you do. She's got some bullion stitches there, a cast on stitch. It gives you that lacy edge and then full of cast on stitches in there and then some tiny little itty bitty sprays coming off of it. It'll be a lot smaller than that. That's quite big daisy. I like this little leaf combina combination. So what she got? She's done some turkey work. Little, little French knots leading then into, oh, except that needs to be taller. So I'll pipe, pop it up the top here. You get the general gist. So there'll be flowers on my petals within the cast on stitch. See, I, I would have struggled to come up with these different combinations. That's why Jennifer is Jennifer. 
her mind, I would have just done the four basics. Well, you can see them here. <laughs> daisy Daisy Grub Stitch. Is that spiderweb stitch? And then I've gone off on a tangent, and that's Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's hilarious. This one's cute. So they're like lazy daisy stitches and then little French knots at the end, pistol stitches coming out. Very cool. That one there is coming right up. Little point of flowers there. And a grub stitch. Great little sampler. So it's things like this that I want to include on my bunny panel at Easter. Just random little projects that have caught my eye that I just love and then can have somewhere to add. All right, I think we've got the general gist. We've got page 50 is inspiration plus. Look at that. Mm. Oh, that girl, Jennifer. Clever, clever. All right, so I didn't even get into the other books. Like, seriously, it's just too much, isn't it? Too much. All right, guys. So the plan will be how much time we got? Ooh, not much. The plan will be to visit my Orts jar here because this is so the colours. That Susanna's fabric will need. And get myself a couple threads, threads, threads. Now I know <clears throat> stranded cotton is not the easiest to stitch with in the way of embroidery. You've sort of the less strands the better, I sort of feel. And I've fallen in love with pearl cotton, but I don't know, after doing the Nikki Franklin project, which gosh, I still have one to stitch yet. Actually, it's here next to me. Hey, Fudgy. I'm up at Barham, and it was a project that I did pre-Christmas at Barham. Let me grab it just to refresh our memories. This is the Nikki Franklin little journal see all the little stitches now this is stranded cotton one thread sometimes two i've still got room for pieces ah oh, just gorgeous very fine and i've still got one to do plus there's i think space save the bees there's still space in my little journal that I could pick up some more kits in the future. That was the one I did where I discovered Nikki at um, the retreat that Forage did. She was the guest. Just gorgeous. So put that away, you're getting sidetracked. So what I'll be doing is just picking up this very first is just doing some itty bitty stitching on these petals to make more petals for my flowers. So the one I'm working on now was on the colour. Those So that's it guys. I've got myself something to work on to make a nice bunch of flowers for my friend Susanna. We've got the chocolate sorted in the chocolate tin. I've given you guys the heads up that there's a bunny project coming for Easter based on that gorgeous primitive rabbit which can be made three-dimensionally. 
make a great pin cushion. Imagine little flowers embroidered all over him. Oh my goodness. So now just doing a series of little French knots. Two, three. Oh, this would be good. This will give us some more bits and bobs to add to the Easter panel. And this is exactly what I was trying to describe to you guys in my head is just little projects where you explore. Let's call it an Easter sampler. Morsels. Let's call it little morsels. So it'll be little morsels of projects that have caught your eye. You want to have a play with them. You want to learn the technique like the technique I saw with Catherine. So find something to stitch, just do a little sample of it, stay within a color theme, and you'll have somewhere to place your morsel. There we go. It'll be little morsels, little stitched morsels, or little something along those lines. I have to come up with a, a name. I bet I don't have a name by the time the project's being done. <laughs> Does it really matter? Does it need a name? I think as long as you guys know what I'm up to and I have a bit of a brief of which that I can follow through with. Two, three. How quick you can do a quick little embroidery. How are we going for time? I bet I'm over. I must be on the hour now. I'll have to toddle off. I think you guys get the general gist. I might put the red in the centre. That's what I was thinking. I'll try and stay within the, the colour palette of the fabric. Having said that, I think I could bring in purples and things like that easily like it all works I don't think I'd be too too out of be great to use some warts up too those were all warts that came from Nikki Franklin kits how generous is that They're not the cheapest of kits to purchase once you take the exchange rate to get them from pound into Australia. Gosh, if I ever get back to England, I'm going to buy up Nikki Franklin kits with the pound. And then I don't have to pay that postage. Gosh. So I'm just going to pop a little red French knot into there. Another one into there. See how simple and easy that was? They are just the cutest little. Okay. While I've got the red thread, I'm going to pop one over there. So once I get them all stitched, I think I'll then cut them out then attach them to a base that I've pre-prepared. So there's, the wadding will come up into the sand, to sandwich it all together. Then I have to think about how I'm going to attach them. I could do a, a overcast stitch, a blanket stitch, um, Could just invisible stitch them together. I guess I'm going to have to take into account how the little embroideries look and will overcast stitch overpower it. I'm just going to grab a green. That's what I'll do. Oh, I like that one there. That one there. That's fresher. That's I should be toddling off. 
So do spare a thought for me as I trudge around Ballarat, looking at pretty things, antique things, hanging out with a lovely bunch of ladies. I'm sure in around this day that you're watching this, there'll probably be a couple videos of the shenanigans that Susanna and I get up to. So you may have watched one already. There may be one coming tomorrow. It'll just depend on when the bunch of flowers video is posted. So now I'm just using just some stab stitch, just long, long generous stitches to get us the little twig for which these little flowers sit on. Probably should have done the twigs first. Do your foliage first and then your flowers. Do your flowers first, then your foliage. Now, what are the rules? I don't know. Whatever you want to do. The beauty of slow stitch, there are no rules. Everyone's trying to define it and everyone's got a different definition and I think that's the beauty of it because it is what it wants to be for you. If slow stitch is you pulling out some embroidery and finishing off an old project and relaxing into it and then maybe adding something a bit random to it, let's say you're finishing off an old cross stitch that you started in the 80s and then you go and needle turn applique a random piece of fabric on some a morsel of lace and you start building on it that i think is slow stitch it's bringing in different elements to create something so it's embroidery it's hand stitching hand sewing mending there's so many techniques and then mush it all together and you've got yourself and if your mind relaxes and you drift off and you forget the worries of the world, I think you're pretty close. You can be stitching a flower with needle thread, you know, um, um, what they call it, thread painting. I'm just going to grab that pink again. So I've got myself a little color palette here. So I'll keep them to one side. That's the start of colors for this project. I certainly won't be needing that whole glass container. So let's just do a couple more French knots around here. I should be saying goodbye, but what the hang, we're just gonna go for it. I just wanna finish this one. I think leaving them in the fabric is good. See, I've got space to rest my fingers on either side. So do consider it when you're selecting some fabrics to embroider potentially little petals. What a great little project to do when you just want to break from all your big projects. Just something to... Maybe I should have a few of these petals made. And then whenever I want to give someone a bunch of flowers that are uniquely something Corinna's made, these would be so good. You could just have a little container of petals and make up a couple little flowers. Maybe we can find, that's five, leave it at that, over here. Maybe we can find at one of the antique places that she's taking me to, Susanna I'm talking about, in Ballarat, um, a, a vase or a, an old tin for them. She was hunting the other day. 
we were chatting. I rang her to see how her back was going. And I said, you know, how are you going? Are you going to be right to A, travel to New South Wales to attend the um, Sarah and Rachel workshop that Green Door is doing? She's um, got herself a ticket and her and hubby are going to go for a little road trip up to New South Wales because she's in Victoria. So that's a lot of driving for someone who's jarred their back. So that was my first concern. You need to enjoy that and be able to sit and attend a workshop if your back's sore. Oh my goodness, it'll just make her feel so ill. But she seems to be coming good. She was having a massage and oh, don't, don't. Oh gee, I hate it when those go astray. Those knots, I wasn't concentrating. And now I've got a blooming mess. It's all good. Well, it's not good, but anyway. I'd say I'll be saying goodbye to you guys any minute. Can't even get my needle disconnected. Yeah, so, yeah, I was pretty concerned about her back. Once again, I've forgotten the whole point of that story. Seriously, I tell you. Now I've got a knot. Well, I might mosey on. I think I can untangle that because it didn't actually start to, you know, um, twist up to form the knot. So I have a feeling I can slither things out of here. Yeah, I can. So with a little bit of patience, that is a tatty end. I'm going to snip that. As long as I've got a knot enough, there we go. As long as I've got enough left to uh, knot off my mess, there's the needle. Okay, so that's disconnected. There, see, that's just enough. Oh my goodness me, tell you. I'll just have to get that little guy back to this side. There we go. Someone else I was watching it on YouTube that if your needle's really fine and you've got this situation, go and change your needle to something really big. And that way you can easily thread because there's no use struggling with that fine eye of a needle when you know you've got some trickiness like this to perform. Luckily, this needle is a good eye, so I'm pretty, pretty confident I can slip that into there and pull off a sneaky little knot. Oh, saved. There we go. So what are we short? I should be going, but I'm not going to let you go until I've finished my flowers. We're going out of time. That video I'm referring to of Catherine's his uh, nearly two hours, and I was like, oh, don't tempt me. I don't think you guys would hang around for two hours. Mind you, I hung with Catherine for two hours because I was stitching. So it's very feasible that one could sit. Gosh, could you imagine if all us YouTubers started making two-hour-long videos? Like, that's nearly a movie, for goodness sakes. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. My back would start cramping up. I know if I have a day where I make two or three videos in one day, by the end of that day, the muscles between my shoulder blades from leaning into this space that you guys can at least see where I'm working um, is very stiff. And then I sort of find that I'm lying on the floor at the end of the night trying to lower my shoulder blades onto the carpet to stretch those muscles opposite to the... It's like concave versus convex. Sort of open up the back a bit. And I can sort of feel them pinching now, so... Which I'm guessing if you guys are sitting for a couple of hours stitching... 
don't tell me I figured that up. Oh no, it's probably best you hop up. In two hour long videos is probably a little bit too long to be sitting. We should be up, have a quick little walk around the fridge. <laughs> Quick, quick stroll around the biscuit bowl. <laughs> Alrighty. The chocolate pot. Done. So that little guy will be ironed out, cut out, then attached to that little guy. And that will become a little embroidered petal in amongst other little petals to create my bunch of flowers for my friend Susanna. All right, guys, I better chuff off. I've got a lot of work to do here. I've got a production line of, I've got a production line of flowers to be stitched. So I'm going to put all my goodies in, in here, ready to go. Plus I've got my little selection of fabrics to work on and some threads. All right, guys, I'm going to say goodbye and, um, yeah, get yourself a tea towel ready for Easter. A linen tea towel would be lovely or even, oh, gosh, there's when you think of tea towels and what's out there, you could pick any tea towel. Head to the cupboard and see what tea towel you have and get yourself a bunny you like that has a good generous shape about him. We'll needle turn applique bunny using Catherine's technique where we create the pieces beforehand and attach them. Have a think about a color palette, grab a bunch of fabrics. You might have a bunch sitting there that uh, our craft shop has put together and you're like, well, I haven't used those. I might try them. So yeah, I'm yet to decide. I can't decide can never decide. Anyway, I'll think about it. We've got time. I might even find something in my travels with Susanna that goes, that's my bunny fabric. Who knows? All right, I'm going to dodge off and um, get stitching. All right, look after yourselves. Bye.